taking good care of me. Open your mouth and just let him know that. Lord, yes, indeed. Thank you for taking good care of me. My Lord and my King, I've come to appreciate you. Thank you for taking good care of me. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen and amen. Please take your seat in his presence. You know, sometimes a good wife will look at the husband or a good husband will look at the wife and they will say, honey, thank you so much for taking good care of me. Have you ever experienced that? If you've, not ever, if you've never experienced that as a husband or as a wife, then you're not doing a good job. But if you're doing a good job, you get to a point where your wife will look at you one day and say, honey, thank you for taking good care of me. And if you're doing a good job, your husband may look at you or whoever is somebody anyway. We say, babe, whatever they call you, whether it's babe or baby, but don't let anybody, a woman call you baby. Baby is okay. Baby is like Peking. All right, that's another thing. <laughs> I tell my, don't call me baby. Call me baby. Baby makes me feel like I'm small. No, don't call me baby. I like my masculine to always. Are you ready to for God's word this morning? Tell your neighbor I'm so excited to be in God's presence. And now tell your neighbor I'm glad you're sitting next to me. And if they ask you really, then you have done something wrong. Ask your neighbor again, I'm glad you're sitting next to me. 
God bless you. Father, we want to thank you for your word. The entrance of your word is what gives life. We ask that your word will gain access into our hearts this morning. As your word goes forth to God, let your word empower us, quicken us, and propel us to act in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray and it will take authority against every spirit of distraction. Lord, we pray that the word of God again will gain access. And at the end of this meeting, oh God, we will know what to do. The word will bring answer, it will bring solution, and above all, the word of God will supply the wisdom needed. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know we're living in your presence stronger and wiser in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Quickly today, by God's grace, we'll probably be wrapping up the series we are running on. You're already aware. This is our month of what? Singing what? A new song. And I prophesy over your life that indeed God will give you the occasion to sing a new song. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We'll be praying after the service or after the after the, um, what is it called? The word or whatever. But we're going to take a time to pray. We pray some prayers together. But this morning, my assignment is to see how we can conclude on the subject, experiencing a life of blessing with evidence. Experiencing a life of blessing with evidence. And our test is, anchor is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 9. And we're going to read that quickly. It said, their descendants will be known among the nations and their offsprings among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people that the Lord has blessed. Again, I speak into your life that all who sees you and your children will acknowledge that you are a people that the Lord has blessed. Amen. That means there are certain results that they will see that will make them know that what you are enjoying is not the doing of any man, but it is the doing of Yahweh himself. Amen. May your life reflect these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May your children and your grandchildren carry this order of blessings in the name of Jesus. Meaning that when others are struggling, they will be thriving in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But we will not go back to that now. But let me put this out there. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 22. Let me see that in NLT please. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 22. If you can have it quickly. Proverbs 15. Is 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 that it? Is that what you have there? Okay. Change it to 20. 15, 20. Okay, sorry, you're, you're fine, you're fine. Back to, back to what you had before. Yeah. Go back, where you were for. <laughs> Plans go wrong for lack of what? Advice. Many advisors brings what? Bring sources. I don't know the translation I have here. It said, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Without counsel, what happens? Purposes are disappointed. So when you come to the house of God, what we are doing now is we are dishing out what? The counsel of God, the way of God, so that your purpose will not face disappointment. God's agenda or your plan or whatever you're desiring for will not face disappointment. When you despise, you know, good counsel, when you despise the counsel of God, the Bible is saying here that the outcome will be disappointment. And I pray for you that your purpose will not be disappointed. Your destiny will not experience disappointment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So today, we have examined a whole lot of things and then we began looking at how to unlock the evidential blessing. Remember, our goal is not to tell us that we are blessed. We already know we are blessed. As children of God, you are blessed. Our assignment is to let us know the things you know that we should experience to validate that we are indeed blessed people. That is not just what we are saying, but it has become how we are living and the experience we are having as believers. So when we finished that, we began to look now on how we can unlock this evidential blessing, moving us from the place of potential to the place of experiential. Because many people, especially in the body of Christ, we are running with potential blessing, which is the promise of God, which is okay for us to know. But that's not where God wants it to end. God wants to move us from the place of professing the promises to the place of doing what? Actually manifesting the blessing. That is, that is when people will see you and say that indeed you are a people that is blessed. 
Not because you're declaring that you're a blessed person. No, by the outcomes of your life, by the results you're producing, people should be able to see your results and say, indeed, this is a blessed woman. This is a blessed family. This is a blessed young man. Like the testimonies we had this morning, those are the proofs of the blessing of God upon a woman's life that you're testifying about your son who went to high school and there was no day you got a phone call that Jaden was creating issue. It's a testimony, y'all. The testimony. There are people here that have boys. The moment they check, they leave the house, their heart, their heart is beating because they don't know what they're going to return with. Some people ended in high school, started smoking Igbo. Dope. <laughs> their brain reset their brain and now they are no more. But we thank God for what God is doing for us here. Can we celebrate this God for the evidence of blessings upon our life? So our goal now is to see how we can unlock this blessing from the place of potential to the place of experiential. Do you get it now? So the first thing we examine is that we must seek God first. We must seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. We took time to talk about that and then we have spoken on deliberate you know, application of kingdom principles. That's when I taught us that there is the person of God and there is the principle of God. There is the person of Christ and there is the principles of Christ. If you want to enjoy the blessing that the scripture says, uh, you know, that we have the blessing without sorrow, you know, it is you engaging in the principles of Christ. So what the person of Christ did was that the person of Christ brought you salvation brought you access into the promise, brought you awareness of what you can assess as a believer, but it is the principle of Christ that makes you begin to experience the promises of God. Am I too fast for you this morning? Okay, so we, we established that, that we must do what? Embrace not just the person of Christ, but also the principle of Christ, because in Christ, there are two sides of Christ. I hope I taught you that also. There is the, 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 the lamb. The lamb is the one that brought us salvation. So there is the salvation side of Christ. And there's also the king side of Christ. Because he is a king. And what we have here now. Every one of, here, every one of us here. Belongs to the kingdom of God. Salvation is what brings you into the kingdom. Are you hearing me? And in the kingdom. You must abide to the principles. If you want to see the promise. Become a reality in your life. Am I making sense? So but the challenge is that many of us, we end with the salvation and then we leave the king. Just like you have the lamb and the lion. You know, the lion is the king. Jesus is going to return not as a lamb. He's going to return as what? As a lion because he's coming to do what? To take possession of a kingdom. I think I'm preaching too much already. Okay. <laughs> but if you get this, you get so many things. So you must embrace what? application of the kingdom principles and then number three is where we're starting from with a few minutes we have number three is i said avoid crooked reproach sorry crooked approach to life if you want to see the blessings of god becomes experiential in your life you must avoid crooked approach to life you know there are crooked christians right have you met them don't look at your neighbor there are crooked Christians, 419 Christians, scammers Christians, there are all manners of Christians. They are safe. They have entered. They, they, they have entered. So when, when you look at people in the church, be careful because these are people that are standing on the salvation. They have not entered into the kingdom yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we must avoid what crooked approach to life. I said here that uprightness is a key that unlocks the blessing. Uprightness is a major key that unlocks the blessing for us as believers. Today, we, 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 we see, you know, growing up, I'm still young, but, but growing up, there are a, 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 a set of people that we call SU. These are individuals that we know that they are, they are they, we can call them fanatics, but they were not fanatics, but they were crazy for God, pursuing God. One of the things we knew them for was that they were a people of integrity. If you give them money, you will come back and meet your money there. If they tell you good morning, you go out, it's going to be good morning. But unfortunately today, even in the Christendom, if a Christian, some Christians tell you good morning, you need to go outside. Your watch may be lying to you. You need to really go outside, open the curtain. You may not be, the curtain may not, you need to come outside to really believe that it's morning. Are you hearing me? But as a Christian, 
that should not be our life. We should be a people of integrity. Because there are kind of blessings that the devil will not give you. I, 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 time will not permit me. But there are kind of blessings that you cannot access as a child of God. Because again, the devil can give you stuff, y'all. Oh, y'all don't know? Yes, the devil can give you fame. The devil can give you money. The devil can give you connection. The devil can give you heavy mula. Devil can give you stuff. He's also running the kingdom of this world. So he has access to money, he has access to connection, he has access to influence, and that's why when you're serving God, let not your motivating factor be about material blessing. Are you hearing me? Because even the devil himself can give you material blessings. But the blessings of the Lord is what make it rich and it adds no sorrow. And for you to be able to unlock that dimension of blessings, one of the things you must do is you must embrace integrity, uprightness. Uprightness is a major key in unlocking the blessings from God. So as believers, for us to move from the place of just experience, you know, confessing blessing, we must move to the place of what? Uprightness. I said compromising will only implicate or complicate rather, complicate your destiny. When you live a life of compromise, you will end up complicating your destiny. As a pastor, as a child, you don't need to be a pastor. As a child of God, there are things you cannot be involved in. There are deals you cannot be involved in. There are places your name cannot be mentioned. There are things you cannot get yourself into, not because you don't want to have money, but because you don't want to soil your hand as a child of God. Proverbs chapter 18, so 11 verse 8. Proverbs 11 8, I didn't give you that scripture, but if you can find it for me. Proverbs 11 8, it said the righteous is delivered out of trouble. The righteous, he said the righteous is delivered out of what? Out of trouble and the wicked, those words, comment in his stead. So trouble, the righteous are not falling into trouble because they are living a life of upright. When you are living a crooked life, you fall into the trouble that anybody else falls into. You have problem with IRS, you have problem with INS, you have problem with GNS, you have problem with CNN. Everywhere you go is trouble because you're living a very, very crooked life. Nobody can trust you on your job. You're falling into all kinds of trouble because you're doing what? You are a crooked individual. So crookedness is an invitation into trouble. But if you live a life of upright, upright life, God delivers you from trouble because the enemy will always have a bait. But I'm praying for you that you will not fall victim in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Proverbs chapter 13 verse 15, it said, good, good understanding gives favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Good understanding gives favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Who is a transgressor? Transgressor is not someone that is not safe. Transgressor is someone that wants to do it the way they want to do it. That are always saying, I know God wants us to do it like this, but I'm comfortable doing it like this. I know this is God's demand, but I would rather do it how I want to do it. You know, that is the way of a transgressor. What is the outcome of that life? He said their life is hard. They will live a tough life, hard marriage, hard life. You know, nothing will work for them. You can't see the blessing of God in the life of an individual that their life is hard. No. Anyone that is living a hard life, life is hard for them. That person cannot be able to express. Their life cannot give expression to the blessing of God that we are discussing today. So I pray for you. Wisdom in the name of Jesus comes upon you. I say wisdom comes upon you. I say wisdom comes upon you. The level of your blessedness is determined by the level of your faithfulness. The level of your faithfulness, the level of your commitment, the level of your 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 faithfulness and and commitment and integrity. That's the word I'm looking for. So the level of your blessing is determined in this kingdom. Please understand that I'm preaching and I'm teaching as regards to this kingdom. You can go out, do it your own way. But if you want it the way of the Lord, the blessing that makes you rich and add no sorrow, add no sorrow, add no sorrow. I have seen people go up and they crash. This morning I heard Papa saying, repeating again what he said on Friday, Bishop David Oedipo. He said that anyone can go up by skill. Please pay attention to this. Anyone can climb the ladder of life by skill, you know, but those that will stay 
on the ladder are those that will carry God with them, that have God with them. And believe you me, many of us, you can climb up, you can, you can buy 20 cars, I've seen it, you can, you can look like everything is going well for you. But without God, without God's way, it will end in pain. It will end in pain. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Even if it's marriage, if you go and marry crookedly, because some of us will have crooked marriage. Okay. You crookedly marry, marry somebody, you are going to crookedly experience hard life. You crookedly get that job, did all kinds, committed all manners of crime to get the, I'm just teaching the word of God. Are you following me? We must be very, very careful how we live our life because the blessing we want is the blessing that make it rich and add no sorrow. Proverbs 28 verse 20, powerful scripture, I love it. Let's see it. And I will see. He said, he just, he said faithful man shall abound with what? Come on, church people, read it with me. Want to go? With what? With blessing. But he that maketh haste to be what? To be rich or to show forth blessing shall not be what? Shall not be innocent. Church people, read it one more time with me, please. A faithful man shall abound with what? With blessing. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall do what? Shall not be innocent. So a faithful person will abound with blessing. I'm praying for you. Give me that same scripture in NLT, please. Let's see it in NLT. It says, a trustworthy person. Remember, we're talking about avoid crooked approach to life. He said, a trustworthy person will get rich rewards. Not just that it will be rich, but it will get what? Rich rewards. But a person who wants quick riches will get into what? Into trouble. We have sorrow. Leave that scripture there. Let me play with it for a minute. So you see, a trustworthy person will get rich reward. Sometimes it's not physical cash. It's not money, but because you're a trustworthy person, what it allows God to do is to connect you with people because everybody wants to do business with men of integrity and someone that they can trust. Are you hearing me? So he's saying here, I want to make your life reflect my blessing. I want to bless you with material stuff, but the way to get it, get there with me is that you must embrace what? Trustworthiness. You must become a trustworthy person. When you become trustworthy, automatically what will happen is that you begin to do what? To get rich reward. I decree that that shall be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, please hear me. Hear me. Please, you may not be perfect. You may not be perfect, but it is very, very compulsory that you remain sincere in life. I'm going to say one more time. You may not be perfect. We are not all perfect. But please try as much as possible to live, to be sincere. You know, be sincere. You are, no one is calling you to be perfect. But please try to be a sincere person, a sincere business person, a sincere pastor, a sincere husband, a sincere a career person. Whatever you're doing, try as much as possible to be sincere in the delivery of what God has called you to do in your generation. So I said here that true riches come from faithfulness. Faithfulness. Some of you are driving cars. I drive Mercedes. If I have money, I will upgrade and it's probably going to be Mercedes again. Why? If I want to drive any other car, it's going to be Acura. Why? Because I've driven Acura and Acura I feel like it's very, very trustworthy. I didn't spend a whole lot of money. The same thing with Mercedes. Why am I doing that? If I bought a car and any car you cannot trust that car, will you buy it? Okay. Will you buy it? You won't buy it because you can't trust it. So all the people, all the money they are making from you is because they have built themselves to be trustworthy people that they said, this is my product. I put my approval seal on it. You can trust this computer. You can trust this car. You can trust this life. It will deliver. Sometimes I tell my wife, I said, the way I know sometimes I come out very hard on my children, you know, but I don't want somebody to marry my daughter and then wake up and say it was a scam. I'm going to tell you why I'm saying it. I'm a pastor. My wife is a is pastor's wife. So anybody that wants to marry any of my daughter, there's already a certain level of way they think they should behave, correct? Yes. And so when they marry them and they find out that they're useless like any other person, what's going to happen? They will say, ah, pastor and first lady, we have been scammed. 
The young boy will say, I've been scammed because I thought I married pastor's what? daughter. Are you following what I'm saying? In the same way, we must live our life and make sure that we are trustworthy people, sincere people, because people like to do business with sincere people. I'm telling you, what I have gotten because people felt that I'm sincere, they could do business with me, is more than any other person, any other thing I have gotten in life. Embrace this thing, especially those of you that are business individuals. And those of you that are career people, you get promotion when people see that you're a faithful and you're a trustworthy individual in what God has called you to do. I pray that you receive wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I said that uprightness facilitates the full manifestation of the blessings of God. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 3. The integrity of the upright shall... Proverbs what? Tell it. It said, the integrity of the upright shall do what? Shall guide them. But the perverseness of the transgressors shall do what? Shall destroy them. Shall destroy them at the end of the day. But the integrity of the upright shall do what? Is what will guide them into greatness. I decree over you that when I see you, I will see you at the top. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted. The city is exalted. So the upright has blessings allotted to them. We see that in, in Proverbs 11, 11, KJV. He said the blessing of the upright, you know, by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted. Number. Number four. Number four. Number four ways we unlock the blessing of God in this kingdom is by walking the promise by walking the covenant promise many of us we know what God is saying we want to we confess blessing I'm blessed I'm blessed in the morning I'm blessed in the evening Abraham blessings are mine you know we talk about I'm a blessed child of God oh I'm blessed and highly favored thank God for your confession but we must walk the promise of God harvest is a product of blessing it takes work to convert promise into evidential blessing. It takes work to convert what? Promise into evidential blessing. Again, it takes work. It takes work to do what? To convert the blessing or promise into evidential blessing. Only those that work on the promise have the evidential blessing. Not those that read of it, not those that receive it, but those that walked on it. So, as believers, we must be ready to walk on the promises God has given to us. You shall be the head and not the tail. That is a promise. Right? It's a promise. But you cannot, if you don't walk, you will remain the tail. No prayer, no anointing oil, no holy water will deliver you out of that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, as a believer, we must embrace walking. Jesus said, my father walked at all I walk. Jesus said, I must do the work of him that sent me. Why is day? For night cometh when no man can walk. You are redeemed for good works. Don't fold your hands like the church, I think it's in the Corinthian Corinth church. After they got saved, all of them sat down because as at that time, people were selling their house. They were not discussing the issue of giving or tithes and all that. So everybody, like let's say this week now, every should go and sell off his land, sell off everything he has and bring it to church. Some lazy folks who sit down there, they eat breakfast, they eat lunch, they eat dinner, they bring coke, they drink, and then next time they're looking around, you know, pastor, somebody will just get up and go and sell everything and bring it. It's not They were not debating, how much should my tithe be? Should I pay gross or net? Uh, who chops the tithe? Who is the, the offering? They were, not, they were selling off everything because of the excitement that Jesus was going to return and rapture them. So one day, they gathered them and said, oh boy, you need to go and get a job because now you are becoming a problem in the church. No, for it, that's what happened there. You've become a problem, you've now become a busybody. Men are now gossiping. Why? Because they, don't, they are not working. He said, no, you need to go and work so you can give people. Yeah, they were gossiping. It was gossiping men. You know, there was a time I preached against it in this church. We had some crazy men that were association of gossips as men. They are no, they are, I don't see any of them here anyway. Yeah, you finish with it, you go and start going, no, 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 no. I said, this is, what, that, this, this is what happened. You're not busy. You need to get something. You know, get a job, start business, get a second job. Once you get a second job. <laughs> anyway, but they had to call them to go to work so they can be able to do what? To give and be a blessing. So somebody said, we got to work. We got to work. 
Anything you see working today is because somebody is at work. Somebody is at work. You see a rich man today in the body of Christ. It's not because Bishop Edebo laid hand on them. Thank God for that. It's not because Pastor Henry prophesied over their life. Thank God for that. The blessing is supposed to quicken you to go to work. Not to sit down and become a problem or a burden to the body of Christ or to societies. Are you hearing me? What I'm preaching is for every believer, wherever you are, hear this, that God wants us to go to work. The man that carried the blessing, Isaac, is the blessed child. In Genesis chapter 26, what happened? He met God, there was famine, you know, like uh, some, where some of us are from now that there's no, no gas and there's too much money for uh, petrol or gas there. You know, there was famine in that land. And then Isaac wanted to take up to what, what we call Jackba, that means to run away in Nigeria. Isaac was getting ready to run away and then boom! God met him and said, stay here. Stay here. I will bless you in this land. But after I had that long conversation with God, he didn't say, well, the God of my father, you have visited me. Begin to talk the heart of people. Let them make sure I have food to eat. Let them make sure. What's his, what's his wife name? Rebecca. That Rebecca does not leave me because of poverty. No. He didn't, he didn't arrange prayer points. What did he, the Bible say? And Isaac showed in that land. Isaac showed in that land. Isaac went and began to dig well. Because the blessing we are trusting God for will come. The work of your hand is the channel. That is the conveyor. That is the conveyor. That is the conveyor. That's why if you need to go to school, go to school. Don't just be envying others. There are things that will not drop from heaven. But if you're ready to work hard, those things will begin to drop for you. Are you hearing what I'm yes, saying? Sir. What God can do for you is that God will make it that it's not stressful for you. That you're able to get there. So whatever your eye sees, okay. One of my daughter likes designers. He doesn't want cheap tennis shoe. He doesn't want cheap anything. So her mom was, you know, screaming angry. Said, Why is it that everything you want to buy must be in this amount? I said, leave her alone. I said, my, my daughter, Hosulo. <laughs> yeah, Hosulo. So you won't borrow shoe from your roommate. Yeah. So I said, it's a good thing. If you desire good thing, that means uh, more responsibility. You must work hard. I told my wife, I said, that's what helped me. Oh. Me, I like good stuff from time. You can't go and buy me Ben Dan Boutique. I will frown fight my mom. I said, one new one. There's a way new one smells. You know? I said, a lot of that. I vowed that I'm going to make money to be buying new ones. That's what I told my wife. Okay, leave, the, leave me selling brown pants. <laughs> I had to hustle. That's hustle. Oh. I had to hustle. Okay. Whatever I had to do, I had to work to make sure that I didn't beg anybody or borrow from anyone. I pray for you in this season. Receive strength to go to work. Yeah. Receive strength to go to work. Yeah. Receive strength to go to work. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Work is doing what is required so you can acquire what you have inquired. Work is what? Doing what is required so you can acquire what you desire. Walking simply means doing what? Doing what is what? Required so you can do what? Be able to acquire. Okay, acquire what you desire. Thank you. There are people helping me. Ecclesiastic chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with all your words, all your mind. Engage it. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. We know that scripture, right? That whatsoever this person doeth, James saying, it shall work, it shall prosper. So you must give yourself to your task. You must give yourself to your assignment. You must give yourself to your job. You must give yourself to what God has called you to do. You know, Jacob was able to, you know, Laban was able to say that Jacob is a blessing as a result of what Jacob did. Not just because Jacob showed up, but Jacob was so hard working that Laban could say, because of you, I can see the blessings of God. The same thing with Joseph. Joseph, Potiphar said, God has blessed me because of you, but because of what Joseph did. And is someone hearing me? So please, give the works of your hand, your job, the certification you need to get, go get it. Those of you that are in school, pursue it. Don't give up because God has given you that wisdom, that knowledge because that's the only way he's going to be able to express or give the blessing expression in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So whatever you're pursuing, be the best. Be the best at it. Be the best at it. 
whatever you're learning, be the best at it. Walk out because that is how God will give what expression to the blessing. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. To the blessing. To the blessing. And then be wise as you're working hard. Because work hard doesn't mean you should go and take two and a half jobs, three jobs, and then knock yourself out and say, Pastor said we should work hard. That's not what I'm saying. Work hard with your brain. All right? Engage your brain, please. Because some people, it's okay, I desire this. And then you go and take, like, before somebody in our church left Virginia, went and bought a house in Maryland. The day he called me to come and dedicate the house. I said, ha! Ah, you are who are living here? He said, just me and my, my daughter. I said, where your daughter? Six bedroom, massive. I said, wow. I said, we've never seen each other. I said, pastor, it's work. I just have to take a day off to come. I said, okay. So I get to find out. She was doing like three jobs. She does not sleep in the household. Only one day in a week is when she comes there to sleep. I said, that's a dumb move. But majority of you, that's the life we're living. Because you want to show up, you want to impress people, and then you go buy a mega house that you're not living in. Because you're clocking eight hours, clock out after eight hours, and some of you that are not, you'll be delaying your report so you can collect over time. I know how you would do. Delay your report on Sunday morning. They're supposed to sign up. No, you won't sign up because somebody is running late. You say, I take it. And then you said, HOD, I'm going to be late. I'm a little bit delayed. No, you're taking extra, extra work because you love that time and half. You're robbing Peter to pay for. God will help you. Number five. Number five. Because I need to wrap this up. Time is, is almost gone. Number five. Number five, I said the anointing of men. You need the anointing of men to give expression to the promise that God has given to you. Pastor, what are you saying? God's anointing is potential. It, that is what the blessing is. When God anoints you as a man to be wealthy, to be rich, to succeed in life, it is potential. It is men that gives it expression. It is all I teach you today. Hear what I'm telling you. Whether you're a businessman, whether you're a career person, God will use men to give expression to the anointing he has given to you. There is a season in your life when men will now validate the anointing on your head. You can shout all you want, God has anointed me. God has told me I'm going to be a billionaire. God has told me I'm going to be a kingdom uh, financier. Quote all you want, God has said I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. God has said I'm going to be the best doctors. Let me tell you, the best doctor for you to become the best doctor, it will take men for you to become the best doctor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In Nigeria, the young lady that, uh, the chef, young lady that won a uh, uh, Guinness Book of Record. Some of you watch it, right? It wasn't only her, she was doing the cooking. But guess what? Men were there. People were recording. It had a team built to be able to, she could not have done it all by herself. No, there is nobody in this world that succeeds on their own. No, no one is self-made. Man must anoint you. Man must anoint you. If man does not anoint you, you're not going anywhere. For God to give expression to the blessing, you must have clients. The clients are men anointing you and saying, we agree with God, God, what God said to you. So when a customer comes to you, don't treat them anyhow. What you're doing, you are blocking your own blessing. Am I talking to somebody? Men must anoint you. We see God's boy. I call him God's boy. Brother David. Man's approval gives expression to the material blessing. And in often cases, what you're discussing is how you unlock that material blessing. Men must be, men must anoint you. God called you, God called you, God called you, God sent you. Sit down there. The number of men that anoint you is what determines how far you go. You can write that down. Even as a pastor, it takes the number, the amount of men that anoints me that determines how far I can go as a pastor. So whether you are called to, 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 to invent products or you are called you know, to, into service or sales, you need the anointing and the approval of men. All through the scripture, we see it. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. God said to Abraham, I will bless you and you will become what? A blessing. We remember that, right? In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God met Abraham and he said, oh, Abraham, this is the leave your father, leave your kingdom, leave everything and follow me. I will bless you and you will be a blessing to me. And then he said, whoever blesses you, I will bless that person. 
whoever curses you, I will curse that person. Is that in your Bible? Who was telling Abraham that? God, direct, raw, raw encounter, raw promises. And God is a God that keeps his covenant. But look at the same thing, and I will take you there. The same thing with David. But let me finish that of Abraham. When you go back to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, you see Abraham now. Nothing was said about Abraham, about the promises. So Abraham went to somewhere and Abraham married a very beautiful woman. Mama Sarah was so beautiful that Abraham, as a reason of, of her beauty, you know, became, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? That's, that's the word, when, when, you're, when you're threatened, that somebody uh, insecure. So Abraham, I suppose, daddy, daddy became insecure. Because he had a very beautiful, I call him daddy, daddy Abraham. He married a very beautiful wife. And then he said, this place you are going now, all eyes are going to be on you. Look at your Coca-Cola bottle shape. You know, I know the king, he said, will be turning now. And then he said, but you know what? Um, at this point, things are so bad. We are so broke. I know the promise of God is upon our life. I'm just going to tell you, when you go there, you know, you kind of like, you know, like, kind of like tell them, you know, um, you know, not like, we, we are kind of like brothers and sisters. You know that, right? Uh, Sarah, Sarah said, um, yeah, 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 it's okay. So when you go there, you know, don't like let them know that you and I, okay, that we're not tight, okay? So Sarah left. The moment the king, everybody king said, no, 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 I take this one. I take this one. So everybody now went and sat down and then invited uh, Mama Sarah. And then they began to chat, you know, he was getting excited to them kill cow, put champagne. Tonight's going to be a good day. <laughs> Mommy Sarah is there. Daddy Abraham is speaking in tongue where he was. Oh Lord, you must intervene. <laughs> you must intervene. They saw him sweating where he's sitting down. He won't sleep every minute. He comes out to look at the window. And then the people, okay, that's my own side of the story. <laughs> Everybody say, why is this man uncomfortable? You know, he must like his sister so much. He said, yeah, we kind of like each other even though we're sisters. <laughs> so Abraham went inside there. Abraham went there, so the king went to sleep. And God came to him and looked at him at night. He woke up, he said, you're a dead man. The man said, what did I do? He said, the man you have, the woman you have is somebody else's wife. He said, ah, that's not what he told me. God said, God said, I did not allow you to sin. I didn't allow you to commit that sin. But this is what's going to happen. That man that is in the, in the tents outside there is a prophet. He will pray for you because as I'm talking to you now, everybody in this country, every woman is now barren. The man said what? It's in your Bible. Everyone is now barren. No one here can give birth to a child. The man said, what do we do? He said, return the child. So he took mommy Sarah, went back to Abraham and said, why did you tell me that you are a prophet, that you're a man of God? Why did you lie to me? Abraham said, let's not worry about that. How do we handle this now? The man said, okay, if you really go down, that was where he got the material blessing. He gave him goats. He gave him sheep. He gave him camel. He gave him gold. He gave him silver. From that place, Abraham's blessing that God spoke began to manifest. God had to use a man. And then he gave him male and female servant. So when you fast forward, you know, about Abraham, he said, and God has blessed him in all things. And they will list the same thing that that man gave him. So the man gave him the capital. So you need the anointing of men on your head. You need the anointing. In other words, the approval of men. We fast forward to brother David. David, you remember the story? They came, the first anointing. Samuel showed up and said, you know, the Lord has called me to, to anoint you. They anointed him. After they anointed him, you know the story of David. I don't need to go back into it. You know, he was supposed to become the king of Israel, but it didn't happen. So David went into exile into the cave of Adullam where God used him. He went through the process. When he came back, you know, in the process, King Saul died. When King Saul died, he was fighting the person that brought the news. As a matter of fact, they killed the guy because the guy lied. And a few, I don't know, months or years, the, the children, the sons of Judah came. And they came to him and said, David, are you not the anointed one? Nail down here. And then the children of Judah poured oil on him. The moment they poured out to you, now that is the anointing of man. Guess what? He became the king of Judah. Fast forward, few period later, the whole Israel gathered together, came back to him and said, were you not the one that delivered us in battle? You know, during the time of Saul, kneeled down again and they poured oil upon him and that was how the promise of God 
became his experience and David became a mighty king. Sir, you need the anointing of men. And I pray for you that the men and the women that will anoint you, may you locate them. Yeah. The men and women that will anoint your product, may you locate them. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You need the anointing of men. My mentor, Pastor Dutola, right? We just came back from Canada. The Canada church we went to is a church that is over 3,000 people. Massive. Pastored by a Nigerian. House of Praise. Redeemed Christian God. House of Praise. Saga. Pastor Wale. When we got there, we were going to attend the program and have it like a retreat, you know, to, to fix some things and talk to God. When we arrived, they, before I left, I called my mentor. Some of you, that eh, my father, my father, and you're deceiving and fooling yourself. Don't call me your father if you will listen to what I'm saying. Before I went to see him, I told him, I said, sir, I want to go to Canada and I want to see this man of God. He said, okay, go ahead. Probably called him, I don't know. The day before we leave, finally we arranged to leave. The day before we left, I called him and said, sir, I'm a pastor. He's not paying my salary, but he's my mentor. I said, sir, I'm heading to Canada for this meeting and I'm going to be going with First Lady. He said, may the Lord go with you. Tell pastor, I said, hello. When we landed Canada, you know what? They carried us, they treated us like I was one of the guest speakers. The protocol, they were, they were staying in the same hotel I was staying for the period of time we were there. So it's not that you call them, they say, okay, let's see who's off work today. We'll see who's getting off early to come and bring your food or do other stuff. The food, whatever, they carried us, the kind of honor I have never enjoyed in my life. It was not me that they were honoring because my mentor has anointed me. I'm telling you, you must pray to God for men to anoint you. You can have a voice, you may not have the best voice, but when man anoints your voice, you go places. There are people that sing better than some people that are singing. Those you on your come. It's anointing that he carries. I listen to him, he has voice, but it's anointing that he's using. It's the anointing, the anointing of men. Bishop, Pastor, uh, who's his pastor? His, no, it's not. Pastor Paul Enente has anointed him. Africa has anointed him. I'm telling you, until men anoint you, you are not going anywhere. It's the truth. You are in IT, they put anointing on you, your boss puts oil on you, guess what, you're not going anywhere. The CEO will fight, raise the money, do whatever they need to do to put you there, to say, you need to stay. I don't know why, but you need to stay. Why? Because your boss, your supervisor has anointed you. You're a business person. One client can anoint you anoint your business and your business gets wings to begin to fly and you see yourself entering places that you never imagined sitting with people that are kings and queens that you sit back and begin to share tears and say how did I get here did I get here may God raise men that will anoint you Amen. and today I put that first oil upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ I authorize men to anoint you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ May you do well in your assignment. Yeah. Second Samuel 2, 4. Second Samuel 5, 1 to 3. The story of David. And then number six. Number six. Grow up. Grow up to lay hold. Until you grow up, you may not be able to lay hold on the material blessings that God has in store for you. You know what? I can't finish this. I can't finish it. But it's a very important one. I have just one minute. We'll leave it here. Continue from there next Sunday. Have you been blessed? Rise to your feet. We're going to pray. Or rather we'll pray than me preach. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Some of you think Christianity is a joke. It's not a joke. These things, these things are real. There are areas you are not assessing because there are things in the word of God that you are taking anyhow. One of the, one of the motto my wife returned with from the pastor's wife there is that there's no superstar in the kingdom of God. Say there is no superstar in the kingdom of God. Every one of us are children of God. As far as your eyes can see and as long and as far or as hard as you're ready to walk as a believer, every promise of God 
belongs to every child of God. That's why I tell you, you can't allow anyone to intimidate you as a believer. Unless you're not doing what you're supposed to do. We are called, see, we have the backings of the almighty God. We have the backings of the almighty God. We have the backings of the almighty God. I want you to lift up your hand and you're going to pray. Your first prayer is, Father, let's send men that will anoint me. Pray it with all your heart. Father, send men that will anoint me, oh God, in my life, in my career, in my business. Lord, send men that will anoint the works of my hands, oh God. Send men that will anoint the gifts you have given to me, oh God. I am gifted, but Lord, send men that will anoint this gift and give it wings to fly. Lord, send men that will anoint the works of my hands. Lord, send men that will anoint me, oh God, afresh. Send me the anointing of men, the oil of men, the oil of approval from men, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Send men that will anoint me. Send me men that will put oil on my assignment, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 23. Isaiah 65, verse 23. Let's read. Everyone want to go? Say they will not walk in vain, and their children will not be doomed to misfortune. For there are people blessed by the Lord, and their children too will be blessed. We are going to pray. Our prayer is this Father, in the name of Jesus, I and my children we shall not be doomed for misfortune. Is anyone praying? This is pray it aloud. My children shall not be doomed for misfortune. I decree and declare it. I, I, I legislate to the God that my children will not be doomed for misfortune. My wife, they will not be doomed for misfortune. In the name of Jesus Christ, reckon the petal, mention their name. They will not be doomed for misfortune. Myself, my ministry, the works of my hands will not be doomed for misfortune. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to pray this prayer for the children of Winners Church. And your children, just the children only. But in the process, you can mention your business, mention your career, mention yourself, and say, Lord, our children, the children of Winners Church, will not be doomed for misfortune or to misfortune. Go ahead and pray that prayer now. Please pray with all your heart. Our teenagers, our younger daughter, our children, Will not be doomed, oh God. Love for misfortune, to misfortune. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rekona panata, ebrato sanya, mekaya kama, besone lepe, elakata, brato sote, meshanata, ikalapa, rakata yakata, bata yakapata, rekenetete. No one connected to this commission. No one will be doomed to misfortune. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus said, this prayer is covering so many things. That means they will not, you know, if they go to the wrong school, it could be a journey to misfortune. If they marry the wrong person, it might be a doom to misfortune. If they befriend the wrong person, it might be a doom to misfortune. I know they are good kids. We're only speaking into their future. And I want you to pray from the inside of you. So tomorrow, you will not carry them from one shrine to another. Open your mouth, please, and establish this. We are issuing a divine injunction that our children will not be doomed for misfortune. Pray that prayer. My children, oh God, children of Winners Church, they will not be doomed to misfortune. You will order their steps. You will direct their path in the name of Jesus Christ. Maya Katolepe in Atosataya. Breko de Lepada, Aratata, Besonata, Ikenisa, Barato, Berise, Lekotaria. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The last prayer. John chapter 5, verse 7. Hear me. As Christians, New Testament believers, when we say let's pray, it's not meditation. The devil does not hear what you're meditating. That's why you must speak. Let me tell you, there is anointing and power that travels with sound. 
Are you hearing me? That travel with sound. Your sound is a transporter with forces. So when we say pray, we are not saying confess what you did yesterday. We are saying pray. Open your mouth. Don't worry about your neighbor. Their children, maybe their children are settled. Maybe nothing is going on. But you, there are things you don't want to record about your children. I pray for you. I stand in my office as your pastor and as a priest said over you. I legislate on your behalf that your children and yourself, the works of your hand, will not fall into misfortune in the name of Jesus. John chapter 5, verse 7. I need you to pay attention to this. I can't, okay, verse, go to the first one, the, the, no, verse 6. Verse 6, please, so they can understand it. Lehi, Fanatebote, verse 6 now, 6 now, 6 now. He said, when Jesus saw him, talking about the man at the pool of Bethesda, he said, when Jesus saw him, 38 years he was there. When Jesus saw him, I knew he had been ill for a long time. He has been single for a long time. He's been jobless for a long time. He has been sick for a long time. He has been barren for a long time. He said to the man, he asked him, would you like to get well? Would you like to get married? Would you like to get a job? Would you like to get promoted? Would you like a change of story? Would you like a new song? Look at his answer. Here is, he said, I can't, sir. The sick man, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone always gets there ahead of me. Someone always gets there ahead of me. I'm not able to get that job because someone always gets there ahead of me i'm not able to get married because someone always get there ahead of me you are going to pray and this is your prayer point simple please pray this with all your heart give me the prayer point why the struggle now you're going to say father, father. no one father. will get there ahead of me to take my portion in life come on open your mouth and pray no man, no woman will get ahead of me to take my portion. No one will get ahead of me to take my portion in destiny. No man of God will get ahead of my children to take what belongs to them. Bea to support. No one will go ahead of me. Leva Soliata to take what belongs to me. Predisote, Rekelafa, Sinashada, Rakayafa, Predoto Soto, Melakadayata. No one will go ahead of me to take what belongs to me. Senita Dava, Melakolasa, Rapata. No one will go ahead of me to take the job, the blessing that belongs to me. No one will go ahead of me to take what belongs to me in Jesus name we pray one more prayer are you ready to pray James said is anyone troubled is anyone afflicted let them pray Jesus said the house of my father shall be a house of what prayer Prayer changes things. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 3. I know I didn't give it to you, but let me have it, please. Isaiah 37, verse 3. Okay. Everyone read. They told him. This is what King God says. Today is a day of trouble insult and disgrace it is like when a child is ready to be born but the mother has no strength to deliver that baby hold on there are things you want to bear 
There are dimensions you want to access. There are places you want to access. There is a level you want to get to. You are trusting God for your paper. You are trusting God that you will hear good news. Eh? But this is what immigration said. This is what the doctor said. This is what somebody said. This is what you saw in your dream. Today, I release your usual strength upon you. The strength to give birth, receive it. Oh, the ability to fulfill destiny, receive it. You want it. You desire it. You are praying it. You are sold for it, but something is holding your back. He said, It's like a day of trouble, insult, mockery, and ridicule, disgrace. He said, This is like when a child is ready to be born, but the mother has no strength to deliver the baby. Heli, Onani Kukepete, Hesianosa, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hold that scripture and give me. Hosea chapter 13 verse 13 Hosea 13 13 I'm going to connect this, this, this the Holy Spirit just told me to connect it let's see what it was going to show us he said pain has come to the people like the pain of what? childbirth that the pain of what? childbirth I'm glad I'm talking to Christians but they are like what? a child who resists being what? born he said the moment of birth has arrived, but they stay in where? In the womb. Write the scripture because you push it on. End it here. Give me that same scripture in NLT. Was it NLT? Give me that same scripture in King James Version. God is intervening in someone's matter. Even, even as I speak right now. James. Okay. Can we read this? Pay attention. He said, The sorrows of a traveling woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of the children. So, what the Lord is saying is, There is a place you need to enter with God. That's thank you what you are doing now by the spirit that is here now God is administering anesthesia is that what it's called God is administering anesthesia on someone because the delivery process the baby has refused to come so there's going to be a spiritual c-section so God is administering to you what now anesthesia by the spirit of God and the word of God and the prophetic word that is coming on your way now will bring him forth there will be a bringing forth because what you cannot deliver God can deliver it for you I say God can deliver it for you I say may God deliver it for you everything you've been struggling to bring forth may God make it happen may God make it happen may God deliver it I announce a delivery same delivery in the name of Jesus Christ so your prayer is this father I receive strength to bring forth her open your mouth and take it take her mention it mention what it is I receive the strength to bring forth my masters to bring forth my doctorate to bring forth my first million to bring forth my property to bring forth my investors I receive the strength to deliver in Jesus name we pray shepherd your hands towards me Ezekiel 37 verse 10 tell somebody something is happening Ezekiel 37 verse 10 he says so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath 
came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet and exceeding great amen this scripture when God calls a man he does not just send him let me say this please pay attention there are those that are called but that God has called you does not mean God has sent you before God sends a man he gives him a word even Jesus was given a word the word God gave me is this in Canada I took time and I looked at it and God gave me the picture of the people here that this word is working don't change what I tell, told you to do because it has produced tremendous results it has raised great men in industries business come on nobody passes through this church connected to this church and remains the same no nobody god gave me their names that walk past here he said what i told you the second thing i told you when you asked me i said faithful is he that called you son for he also will get the job done have i not been doing the work i said lord you have been doing it he said today swear the priestly blessing upon the people let me connect it David returned when he brought back the ark of God the presence of God as he was dancing the Bible said and David returned to bless his household that's what I'm doing today I am standing here to bless you again so I prophesy as he has commanded me and the bread came into them dry bones dry situation and they stood up on their feet as what an exceeding army hold on my first blessing your hand will touch that testimony you will carry it as your own Whatever you want to obey, I say receive strength to bring forth. I say receive strength to bring forth. During the fasting, the Lord said to me, Ezekiel 2 2. What did I say? I said, The Spirit entered into me when He spoke to me. He said, What is happening to you is where you went to. The Spirit entered into you. And I said, but I've been quoting the scripture. He said, finish the scripture. Give me that scripture. We'll come back to this. Ezekiel 2 2. Hear this. He said, and the spirit entered into me when he spake and did what? And he set me upon my feet. He said, until the word, the spirit word, sets you on your feet. That means it has not entered. I'm here to prophesy that not only. When the spirit enters you, it will set you on your feet. From today, you will no longer end as a mediocre. You will no longer end as an ordinary. You will no longer operate as a weakling. You will no longer operate with a small mindset. You will no longer operate with a power. I release Christ's grace for greatness for impact in the name of Jesus. Let's grace for impact in the name of Jesus. They stood on their feet as great army. Don't, pay, don't worry about that. God is doing what he needs to do. Stretch your hands over me. Stretch it. I speak into your life that every door that is yet to open for you, that you have tried to open on your own, I send the angel of this commission to open that door on your behalf. For someone here, all those people's story of setback and delay. You will not repeat the same story. 
Your guests will receive speed now. I declare speed in the name of Jesus. Every eye that sees you will know that you are blessed. You will not form to be blessed. The evidence will speak for you. I say the evidence will speak to you. For you. Your evidence will announce you. Your results will announce you. In the name of Jesus. Greatness is your portion. You will not miss your way. Hear me. Silver and gold. I have none. But such as I have, I give to you. If my father is alive today, he won't believe what he has seen from this boy. I pray for you. Anywhere you have been despised, even you despising yourself, by the grace that is on this house, from today, you are implicated. Amen. You have been implicated Amen. to matter, Amen. to be great, Amen. to do well Amen. in all your exploits. Amen. You shall be the head and not the tail. If you believe that, shout a big amen. Yeah. Shall be well with you. Yeah. The works of your hands are blessed. Yeah. The God that has lifted many. He gave me a picture of one of my son and daughter. The young girl was in high school when she came in. When I announced that millionaires will rise here, I'm not aware where they are financially. But God said, that grace is speaking in their life. Two of them are married today. He said, look at them. What I told you, you speak the word, I perform it. Today I've come again to speak greatness into your life. May the evidences that are here now as I'm seeing them again, even in the physical, may those evidences implicate you. Part of the things that made God do this. I said, God, you have blessed your people. Why? I don't want to struggle to build you a, to get a building for you. He said, Don't beat yourself down. The blessing, the prophetic unction I gave you to prophesy. The ones you're doing is working. He said, prophesy more. For I will raise those that will make sure that the work is not a burden to you. He said, I will increase them in number. The reason it looks like it's a little bit tough, but I'm not complaining. He said, it's because some of them are holding back. But I will raise more. Have I not done it, I will do it again. For as many that want to be part of this, I decree and declare an unusual level of help. Help is coming your way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Please take your seat, people of God. All this prayer.